Hi, this is May Saeed Ali, and I'm the host of the G42 On Air podcast series. We are excited to be recording the G42 On Air live from Jitex at the G42 stand. The G42 is a technology company, a global leader in AI and cloud computing with the purpose of inventing a better every day. Each episode in this series will transport you into insightful market leading conversations about transformative technology to drive positive progress across industries and societies, all in less than 30 minutes. With me today is Abdel Karim Sawan, a global sales director of G42 Smart Nation, a prominent industry player and digital transformation enabler of future cities. In his role, Abdel Karim is responsible for the global expansion of the company and new market entry. And today we will discuss how can communities propel urban services into a new era of intelligence. Abdel Karim, it's great having you with us uh, today at the G42 On Air podcast right here at Jitex. How do you feel being here today? First of all, it's my pleasure to be here with you, May. Um, this is an amazing event that we have missed uh, in the last couple of years due to the COVID and everything. So it's great to be back with this uh, chaotic but productive uh, environment. You know, I feel like I'm in a dream because like it's the, the, the amount of craziness happening and the traffic, but yet we're so happy about it, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, we're back to back to business. We are know? back to business, exactly. exactly. Uh, talking about back to business, I'd like to know from you in the beginning of our um, interview today, mm -hmm. What is G42 Smart Nation? Who are you guys? All right, this is great. Um, I would like to introduce you to G42 Smart Nation. Uh, we were established back in 2018 to specifically look at the AI aspect when it comes to smart city applications so that we can enhance the lives of the citizens, enhance the lives of the municipalities, the city administration, and so on by introducing the artificial intelligence to ease off on the existing technologies, the existing uh, procedures that um, are in our daily lives at the moment. So the whole idea is how do we improve the processes, how do we improve the lives of uh, each and every individual, and how to make it healthier in both ways. Abdel Karim, when we talk about improving the life of the citizens, what would you say is the next big thing in technology for smart cities? So I think one of the, 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 the major applications that we have developed is to lose the cameras that are um, regularly used on a daily basis. But if we were to put artificial intelligence on these cameras to identify objects, to identify behavior, to identify um, uh, cars and uh, any other product, we can actually um, reduce the human interaction when it comes to monitoring. And by that, what I mean is, if I have a thousand cameras looking at Jitex at the moment, I would need to hire a thousand people to monitor these cameras. Well, by introducing artificial intelligence, it will become computerized, it will become pre-programmed, so that the cameras will automatically identify objects, identify any uh, unusual behavior. Whatever condition that you are looking for, it can be all pre-programmed into the system. And as soon as this happens, you will be alerted. In a way, whereas at Expo 2020, um, there's an old individual walking around. All of a sudden, he falls down on the ground and he's laying down flat. Maybe nobody notices, but the camera notices, and it will actually alert the health and safety individuals to come after this guy and, and seek help, right? So when you say there were thousands of people in the Expo, and you would manage to do that, mm -hmm through the cameras and the AI? Uh, absolutely, so we had, we had uh, about 12,000 cameras and we had preset conditions on human behavior analysis to, to be looked after. And we also had object identification so that we can tell if somebody, let's say, dropped the camera, or sorry, dropped the, uh, uh, a bag in the middle of the way and kept on walking, whether this is an intended behavior or an unintended behavior but we can simply identify that and alert the right teams within the authorities managing uh, Expo 2020. Um, so we can do this for health and safety purposes, and we can do this for security and surveillance purposes, and we can do this for um, any other reason you can think of. So this is uh, from an Expo perspective, right? So you've covered all the elements, security, safety, uh, healthy measures, and every health measures in Expo. But when you look at it from an entire nation and city perspective, can we do that on that level? Absolutely. I think this was a good exercise for G42 Smart Nation because Expo itself was a, a four, four kilometer radius. So it was almost like a mini smart city. And we managed it from A to Z. 
we managed it from the moment you access Expo uh, premises, uh, we managed the vehicles accessing uh, Expo. If you imagine, there was 180 pavilions within Expo. Every pavilion has a number of deliveries on a daily basis. If we had continued the traditional way or the conventional way of um, checking the cars coming in, we would have a lineup from Expo Double Double. Oh my God. So we wanted to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what we did is we installed a, uh, a database system where every pavilion can register their daily delivery, register the plate number of the car, and register the driver's information. As soon as they arrive at the gate, we have two cameras. One of them is facing the driver, and the other one is facing the number plate. If both match the system that we have pre-configured, it automatically opens the gate and it's smooth right. Wow. Okay. So that kind of speeds up the, the process of checking who's coming in and who's not. The next step will be to go to a, an under vehicle security scanner, which is also a pre-programmed AI algorithm that checks and takes an image of the under vehicle. This gets compared to a database of images, and if there's any difference, that means there was tampering done on that vehicle. What so, do you mean by tampering? What does that mean? So if someone, God forbid, put uh, a bomb under this vehicle. Right? To that extent? Yeah. It has this kind of imagery? Correct. Wow. So we compare with the manufacturer's image of this uh, vehicle and what we have on our hand at the moment. If there is a difference between what we have and that image, then it gets sent to a secondary security check. This is where the human intervention comes in. But if there is no difference, it continues on smooth right to the next step. The next step is to actually get a, um, a G42 Smart Nation smart lock. This is something that we have invented specifically for Expo, where we plug it on the back of the truck. It has GPS for coordination of the, the destination point, and it has an anti-tampering, so it locks it completely. What was the last thing you said? It's what? It, it, uh, it eliminates any tampering to be done on this uh, cargo. Okay. So it locks the doors with an automatic lock that can only be unlocked remotely by us. But this truck is for who exactly? For, for the, the pavilion. For the pavilion. Yeah, okay. so the pavilion is expecting the delivery. Okay. The first point of entry is ours, and then we let it go, but we put a lock on it. Okay. But because of the size of Expo, we actually dedicate a route for this cargo to arrive at the pavilion. If he goes off route, that means we know Maybe they're planning something else, right? It was all part of the security of, of Expo 2020. So as soon as he arrives at the destination point, we remotely unlock the cargo, and they can simply remove the lock from the back of the vehicle. So Abdel Karim, when you talk about this, could this happen on a country level? Correct. So from the moment, if you look at a normal or a typical city, we can do this from the moment that any uh, cargo comes into the city via the port or the airport, for that example. And you can simply say, I'm going to take this cargo into this destination point, and I don't want it to go off route or to stop anywhere, especially when you're delivering, let's say, expensive equipment or um, oil and gas, for example. I mean, this could go all the way up to the industrial aspect, right? So we have measurements to, to do the locking. We have to measurements to do the GPS coordination. We have also the weight. And this is the way they do it on the energy sector is the delivery of the oil is done by weight. So if I monitor the weight from um, the moment that you leave the port to the destination, I have protected the investment that I have in there because the weight of the oil has not changed, which means nobody stole, nobody dropped it off in an undesired location. It's very detailed. So when we talk about smart nation and overall, do you cover all the verticals, so the oil and gas, um, security, um, health? Uh, what, what, what else? What are all the verticals that you cover in smart nation? So we, we pay a lot of attention to computer vision, and computer vision can only be done with cameras, right? So we put the artificial intelligence algorithms that we built in-house, we put those on top of the, the, the cameras. We have built something called the video brain, which is the host of all of our algorithms. Um, and one of the biggest ones is the facial recognition. But when it comes to these algorithms, they can be applied to all um, industry verticals, whether it's healthcare, whether it's security, whether it's logistics and so on. Everyone needs um, a security um, component to be done in their own vertical. So we look at these and then we went to, to expand to um, the energy sector, for example. We have come up with a very attractive solution, which is the smart grid. Smart Grid is a very productive solution that actually looks after the electricity production 
to the distribution, to the end consumer where they have a smart meter reporting their usage and utilization. This is done every 15 minutes. At the moment, the conventional way of doing it is that you have to send the inspector to each and every home, take the reading, and then go back to the office, and then they generate the bills. Well, now we do it with a very smart meter that is connected online through our cloud. Um, everything's plugged into a centralized location. Analytics is done on it where we do predictions on what are, let's say, the peak hours of the day, the peak hour days of the week, days of the month, national holidays. We can do predictions on future basis and how we need to optimize the production of the energy. Because production of energy costs a lot of money. And if I produce a thousand volts, but the consumer is using it, maybe 500, that means the other 500 is gone up in the air yeah. and it's a waste. But that could happen in more like developed countries when it comes to technology, right? Could it happen on, in non, or let's say, uh, in developing countries just starting to uh, like apply these kind of technologies? This is the best country that is an ideal scenario for us because if they have nothing and they want to start from scratch, then why don't you go to the best and the greatest technologies? Instead of starting from the conventional meters where you still have to send the inspectors, no, you're doing the investment anyway, you're spending the money anyway. It's just maybe an extra 10, 15% investment and you get the, the, the latest and the greatest, which will last you, let's say, for another 15, 20 years. Um, Abdel Karim, uh, when we talk about smart cities technologies and we think of the future, what is the relation between smart cities technologies and sustainable future? So sustainability in our business can be achieved in many different ways. One of the things that we do at Smart Nation is the smart traffic management. And I think this is quite helpful in reducing the number of cars on the street at any moment in time, yep. reducing the rush hours. So our smart traffic management actually controls adaptive traffic lights. So based on the cameras that we install in each and every um, intersection, we can identify the number of cars coming in, and we will increase the green light and lower, let's say, the red light on the other side in order to get the traffic to clear. Is that already happening in the UAE? This is happening in the UAE and abroad as well. Oh, amazing. Uh, okay. This is, you know, it's an amazing solution because it does really make a big difference in reducing the rush hour, uh, but it's all based on AI analytics behind it. So there's a lot of uh, car counting happening at the moment. And based on that, the AI will make a decision to increase the uh, duration of the green light. At the end result will be less cars stopped on the road. And we all know that if a car is stopped idle, this is when the highest CO2 emission happens. That's right. So by reducing that, then we're also helping the, the environment uh, with the reduction of the CO2 emission. You know, Abdelkin, there's so much happening in the smart nation. I think we're going to cover this topic and take us hours <laughs> to talk about the solution and Absolutely. the services that you provide. Well, thank you so much for your time, for being with us. If there's one thing that you would like to tell um, the audience today about Smart Nation and how important it is for our future, what would that be? I think the use of our AI um, is always looked at as a, as a threat because it's going to reduce the number of jobs, the, the, we're less dependent on humans. And I think if I have a message to the public that will be, the, the, Let's not worry about that because the way that we are moving with yeah. the education, with the next generation, I think they're all learning different jobs, different industries. Maybe our father's generation, our parents' generation was studying completely different um, uh, topics, but the new generation is actually picking up technology. Uh, they're studying computer science, they're studying artificial intelligence. So when you're, you know, when somebody comes to you and says, your AI is going to take away my job. By the time AI is a standard, your son is going to be in the, in the workplace, not you, right? And when, he, when your son comes to the workplace, he will have an involvement in the development of an AI. He's not going to be a person that will be eliminated of a job. So basically, I think what you're saying is we need to apply and accept and welcome AI Absolutely. into our lives. Absolutely, and it will make our lives a lot easier. It definitely will. Thank you so much for your time. Great having you. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in the future episodes. Same here. Thank you so much. That brings us to the end of the show. We hope that this conversation has contributed to your understanding of how technologies such as AI and IoT are changing our cities and our lives. Thanks for listening to G42 on air. 
If you enjoy our show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to come back next time. Until then, this is May Sayyid Ali signing off from Jitex.